it's Lisa. I'm back with uh, the third page of my renovation layouts. Uh, we did a, not renovation, redecorating project in 2020. A renovation, I think, would be tearing down walls and things. We didn't do any of that. Um, but uh, I have one more page of this that I want to do. I did a double page layout in my last video. And it included this uh, wood grain paper from Stamping Up, and I'm going to continue with that this time, and also these gold embellishments. And then we'll see what other things, I'll probably use some of the same lettering, um, and then what other things that we want to use for this uh, single page to tell the rest of the story. We did a lot of things, changing flooring, painting, and whatnot, um, but this was one of the other things that I particularly wanted to, uh, to share a story about. It's this these draperies that I uh, did to frame my French doors. What I had here before were very heavy, um, dark green draperies with swags over them. It was beautiful and it was a great window treatment in about, I don't know, 2006, 2007, somewhere in there when I made it. But it had become something that I thought was too heavy for the space and I wanted a lighter look. I no longer have a business about making window treatments, so I can no longer sell fabrics. I don't have current fabric samples to uh, work with, so I had to go and look for fabric. And I have, there's a very nice shop here where there was lots of choices, and I looked and looked and looked and brought home fabric books, and I probably drove the lady nuts trying to find what I wanted. What I wanted in fabric was I wanted a white background. I wanted gold embroidery. I wanted it to be something sort of modern, and I really initially had my wanted shears, you know, like embroidered shears, but that very quickly I figured out I wasn't going to do that. Now, having been in business for many years in this industry, I knew the pitfalls of having a specific thing in mind that you wanted. I worked with customers who wanted just a certain thing, and we had to try to find that certain thing. I worked with customers who didn't have any idea what they wanted. Um, so, you know, we have and everything in between. But in my case, I had a lot of requirements, and I figured I would have to give on some of them. But as I was looking through fabrics and finally picked out one, I realized I was compromising on a lot of things. And it was a kind of an expensive fabric, and it just wasn't what I wanted. It was embroidered, but it didn't have very much gold in it, and I, I just didn't want to spend, I don't know, it's like $75 a yard or something for this fabric that wasn't what I wanted. So I got to thinking about embroidery. I have a sewing machine that does embroidery. Now, it's not an embroidery machine. It's just a, a regular sewing machine, but it has some embroidery stitches. Most of them do. And I, so I started experimenting a little bit, and I thought, I can make the fabric. Why not? Um, so it would take some time. So I, I still have a lot of my old samples, and most of what I've kept for craft projects and things are prints but I had a few solids, so enough that I could experiment and figure out which um, fiber makeup would work the best. And what worked the best was a white, was a cotton and linen blend. That seemed to work really well with the embroidery stitches. So I did a lot of experimenting with embroidery. Here are some of my samples. I kept these. I went downstairs uh, a while ago to see what I still had. And I was hoping for some memorabilia for the page, and I did find that. But these were some of my samples that I embroidered just to see if it would work and, and what kinds of materials that I would use. This was apparently a really stiff backing material because I wanted these, this fabric to also to be something that could be unlined. Now, embroidering 12 yards of fabric sounds like an enormous task. What, uh, because I was making the draperies, and, be, and when you make draperies, you have the front edge of your pleat, and then you have the back of the pleat, which is in between. You don't see what's in the back inside of the pleat. You only see what's on the front edge. So I knew I could figure out what my spacing was going to be and basically where I needed to do embroidery. So if I went to my dining room and pulled this fabric apart, you would see that the embroidery is only on that front edge of the pleat. The rest of it is not embroidered. So there's, there's a lot to it, but it's not all, you know, every inch of the fabric. But anyway, I experimented quite a bit to figure out which stitches. I loved the stitch coming down, on, and I ended up doing that in like a, a light taupe color. I bought some additional uh, threads to, to work with. I got some um, metallic threads, and this is the actual fabric. 
Um, I played with just, you know, I worked out my design first and which ones I was going to use. And then I did some stitching on the actual fabric with the same kind of backing, this tear off backing material that I was going to use um, for it. And so I still had a little bit of this. So I, I pulled that off and this is what I'm going to put on the page. But I still have all of these samples and this was the resulting fabric. And you can see the, the swirly kind of ribbon design and then these little uh, short segments of various different embroidery designs. So again, it took quite a bit of time, but I got completely customized fabric that I made. And then I just did really simple uh, draperies and used the existing rod. And I'm really, really pleased with it. So I wanted to do, obviously, a page about that. I have these two photos. I have this little bit of memorabilia. I have some more of this stamping up um, wood grain background paper. I don't have the gray paper that I've had around the edge of the other, so I'm just going to use the whole piece. I think I'm going to turn it this way because it's, the floor actually goes this direction in the room. So I think I'm going to turn it that way. And um, then I have some more of these gold embellishments and just have to figure out what I want to do with this page. So let's start playing a little bit here and seeing how I'm going to arrange it. I think I'm just going to have the photos right together. That's usually what I do with with two four by six photos on a page. And the journaling is around here somewhere. There's a fair amount of journaling here to put in and I can reformat it to a wider format. I was kind of thinking, oh, I had, this is one of the die cuts and I really thought that went with the, some of the kinds of things that I did on the embroidery. I think it needs to go up and down though. I could, I also stagger them sometimes. So let's look at some of the things that I have to go on this page besides the gold embellishments. I have my thickers. I really like the gold ones that I used uh, a few of on the previous layout. I do think that I need some paper behind that gold piece if I'm going to put the title down there or maybe behind the photos. So I've tried out several different papers, and I'm not really sure that I have quite the right thing. I do think one of these gold embellishments would look good in the upper right corner behind that key photo. And I could cut it in half and use it in two places across the layout. The fabric embellishment, I think, will go in the lower right. And I'm starting to think that the lettering needs to go towards the top. I usually put my letters on wax paper so I can see how they work out. And I've gone ahead and glued down um, the other embellishments on the bottom and pulled a few more things from my stash. This date label will say March 2021, which is important to the story because that was, of course, the time we were all home waiting on our vaccines. I believe that I was at my, at my sewing machine sewing on this when I got a call saying that my name had come up to get a vaccine early for COVID, and I was so excited. I felt like I'd won the lottery. So anyway, um, I'm putting my letters in. If you're putting letters directly on a photograph, be sure you're, they're where you want them because they really will stick to the photograph better than they will to paper. I was able to move them just a little bit, but it, it did show on the photograph. It's just, it doesn't show up on the, on the uh, video very much. I realize I've kind of left myself here with the, it will just not being able to be in the upper left corner like it should be. So I'm going to put it over the other letters and come up with some way to kind of tie it all together. I've pulled some washi tape. I've got a gray and a black, and I decide that the black one is the best. That kind of surprised me. I thought I would want a lighter color there. But what I'm going to do with that washi is cut it like a, a little arrow so that after you read, it will just, it sort of directs you back to make it myself. And that, uh, I think, helps frame the title. And I have a little bit of space between the journaling and the photos down there that I can fill with the rest of that washi tape and continue the design. It just looked better if I didn't run it all the way across the paper. This page came together really quickly because I had all the pro or a lot of the product pulled 
for, for the other two pages, the background paper, and I had pulled this paper that I, I hadn't already I hadn't used it for anything yet, and these gold embellishments, and then I just had to add a few additional embellishments and a little bit of the fabric, uh, since that was what the page was about. I had the title letters. I changed. I, I did not have these gray and white letters. I knew this page needed something a little bit lighter. And I was kind of surprised that the black washi tape looked good here. Um, I'm, after I got the title together, I realized this really could have been moved up some, but I just felt like I needed to fill in that gap and then sort of direct the eye over to the rest of the title. I will just make it myself. And since I had a gap down here too, that was a good place to fill in the rest of that washi tape. So here are the close-ups of the page, and this finishes up the layouts that I planned to do about redecorating. There were other things that we did. I had a piece of furniture we covered. I bought one piece of furniture. Well, and I also bought these chairs. I didn't talk about those. I ordered those from Amazon <laughs> and then put them together myself, and they were very inexpensive, but they were the perfect match, perfect fabric and everything for the, for the room. So... You know, there were a few other things that we did, but um, those were the things I really wanted to, to call attention to um, in my memorabilia. And of course, I'm living with this now, but who knows? Will we live here forever and there'll be another project somewhere down the road that I may take these draperies down and redo them again? I don't know. I'm going to be getting to an age where I don't redo that many more times uh, in the same house. So it was a, it was a good project to do. And it kept us occupied in 2020 and early 2021. And, um, and I'm really glad that we did it. And I'm glad I've got these pages completed. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little short series on these particular pages. And I look forward to coming back maybe with some more mixed media and other types of scrapbook pages. Thanks for watching.